Hey everyone, Wayne here. Today we're going to look at Kason 68. This is a solitaire game designed by Joe Miranda, published by Decision Games. Um, the map graphics are done by Joe Eust. Um, in this solitaire game, this is one that I've been wanting to cover for a while. Um, it is you versus the system. In this particular game, um, you are playing the allies, protecting the Kason firebase uh, against the communist attack um, as part of the Tet Offensive. Um, before I get going any further, I do want to thank everyone who is has been supporting my channel, um, everyone who's been subscribing. I would love to see some more subscriptions. The reason I say that is because 75% of the people who view my videos are not subscribed to my channel. Um, I would love to see that number drop. Uh, so if you are interested in any of my content, please subscribe. It just encourages me to make more videos. It helps me to f get more games, to make more videos, um, and to cover more things. So. Um, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for commenting. Um, give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. And I'll, as always, you can comment. Let me know what you want to see more of. So, all right, so we'll dive in here. So this game, like I said, is a solitaire game. It's part of a small folio series that Decision Games has. Um, there's a few games in the system. It's the Cold War Blitz system specifically, it's called. Um, I have wanted to cover for a while here. It's super simple, easy to play, small footprint, as you can see. This is the whole map. Um, you don't really need a whole lot else. There's cards for communists, cards for you. Um, basically what it is, is you have, you know, it's it's not hex and counter, but you have counters, um, point to point movement. Um, your counters are going to be very simple. They're going to say exactly what they are. Um, so you could say, here's the, here's a, a allied armored unit. Here's a case on garrison unit. You have firepower and movement, firepower and movement. So super simple stuff. Um, the, uh, communist units, I'll go ahead and look over here at the DMZ. As you can see, the one, the backside has a star on it. You go ahead, you can flip it over and then you can see what unit it is. That way you keep that fog of war as the units are kind of moving around. You don't know what they are until you come in contact with them. So that's a nice little aspect of the solitaire system. So, um, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to run through the game a little bit here and then I'm going to play through the first turn so you guys can see how it plays. So, I already explained the counters, explained kind of the map here. Um, Kason Firebase is right here in the middle. Um, it's where you're defending. You're also defending, and then depending on what you're taking, your different areas, um, how, that's how you achieve victory. Um, you're going to get victory points depending on the area. You're going to have your ground forces. They're going to get to, you have some in the game already. Um, then you get to bring more in through the allied staging area here. You're also going to have air units. So you're going to have, you're going to be able to do, um, Air combat, air bombardments, I guess you'd call them, air strikes, if you will. Um, call it the air attack phase. With everything from B-52s, generic air strikes, to there's also the uh, AC-47 gunship over here as well. Um, and there's a helicopter gunship. Now there's some helicopters for transporting. Probably won't get into it in this video. Simple, basically you can move certain units depending on the retreating. Give them to different areas if it's open or hilltop versus, say, the jungle, the green areas. You can't. Um, pretty common stuff. Um, units themselves, like I said, they have their firepower and movement. You also have units that have a little arrow. That is an elite unit. So that gains an advantage in tactical superiority, which is part of combat, which we will cover when we run through a turn. So you have the turn. And the one other thing I want to cover is the turn record track over here. Um, it starts off on turn nine for this particular game. And how it works, it's not, so every, at the end of every turn, it does go down by one. However, as you play cards, you can see the cards here. They have a number in the corner. That will actually affect the turn track as well. Um, for the allies, you have the cards as like an open hand. You can play whatever card you want. Um, as for the communist forces, they just a deck. You're going to go ahead and draw one card each turn. Um, but it's going to tell you, hey, you know, oh, minus one. So not only are you losing a turn, say, from nine to eight at the end of the turn, when you draw that card, minus one, so now you're dropped down to seven. So in one turn, you may lose one, two, three turns, quote-unquote, although you also there are some cards that will raise it back up. Um, so you never know quite how many turns you have exactly, which I kind of like. It's like a cool little timer effect where depending on if you use more powerful cards, yeah, you're going to lose more turns. Use the less powerful cards, you're going to have more time to get what you need done by moving your units around on the map itself. So um, I think that covers it um, because we'll go through each of the cards in more detail, the allies and the communist ones, once we get into the turn. 
All right, so we have everything all set up here for the beginning of the game. Um, let's go ahead and dive right in. I have a sequence of play. Go ahead and start off. Um, the first sequence or the first phase is the friendly action card. So as I described, you have your hand of cards for the as the allies. You go ahead and pick whatever card you want. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the allied buildup card. You should see it on your screen now. What that is is I get to transfer three allied units in the reinforcement pool to the staging area. Disposition reuse um, because what that means is that I'll be able to keep it over here. That way, next turn I could use it again if I wanted. You will have cards such as this one that say disposition removed from play. So you use that once, it's done. You do not get to use it again in the rest of the game. So, um, like I said, allied build up transfer three allied units in the reinforcement pool to the staging area. So, other than the few allied units on the map already, the rest of our ground forces, at least, will be over here in this allied reinforcement box. So, after the friendly action card phase, it goes right into the friendly reinforcement phase. So what happens is these cards are going to tell you what you're allowed to do, or you know any extras like that, like reinforcements, what you can reinforce, or if there's special events. So in this case, as we go into the friendly reinforcement phase, it says we get to place three of them into the staging area. I remember the allied staging area is up here. So let's go ahead. We're going to pick... These three units are the of the first cav. So first, second, and third of the first cavalry. We're we'll go ahead and place these bad boys over here in the staging area. Now, after you've kind of done that, you can do the friendly ground movement phase. Now, you don't have to rely on a card for that. A card doesn't have to say you can do movement and combat, anything like that. The card just helps out with, hey, do you get reinforcements? Are there special events, etc.? Uh, die modifiers for certain things. So although there's a little interplay between the card or the excuse me the phases and the cards. So just because the card doesn't say something doesn't mean you can't don't get to do it. So we're gonna go into the ground movement phase, like I said. Um, right now I'm feeling good about my units protecting Hill 861, the Rock Quarry, and Case on Firebase. I don't think I'm gonna move any of those units yet because if you notice we have several communist units in these uh, communist entrenchments right adjacent. So I don't want to leave those areas because if you lose case on firebase and they take it over at the end of the turn and their communist units are in there and there's no allied units, they win the game automatically. So, or I should say we lose it. We do not want that. What we are going to do is I'm going to move um, with the movement factor. Remember they have a movement of the, the second number. So for instance, our first calves over here that we just placed, they have a movement of one. They can move one, uh, one box. So we're gonna go ahead and move them. We're going into this uh, long route, route nine here. So it's part of EC route nine all the way here, but yep, long route. And what we're gonna do is because we entered that area now, we go ahead and we flip this communist unit over. Okay, so he is an elite unit. So not great news for us. It's okay though, it's, it'll be okay guys, don't worry. All right, so that was the friendly moving, friendly ground movement phase. Again, I only wanted to move those, I'm gonna Keep my guys here until I get more units on the map, until I weaken these, which is coming up. I'm not going to move anymore. So now we do the friendly air movement phase. Um, we can place our available air units on the map to conduct missions, and we conduct any airborne moves. I'm not going to do any airborne moves right now. Airborne moves would be depending on, you know, if we have use our helicopter transports, things like that, we can move um, units between certain locations. Again, you know, not jungles, more like hilltops, open areas, not jungles. Um, but what we are going to do, we're definitely going to conduct some air missions, some air attack missions. So we have all of our guys over here at the Allied Air available. So I'm definitely going to do is what I'm thinking is I know that these guys are going to engage over here in Long Rue, uh, ground combat. But I want to weaken these communist forces that are adjacent to my units here because I don't know what's going to happen with them. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if they're going to move in and attack me. I really do not want my ground units to suffer. So. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and start placing some air attack units. Um, let's do, this is B-52. So he has a 5 power 5. They just have the one number, so they don't, they're not affected. there's no movement. They don't have to move around. You're just placing them from the box to any place on the map you want. Other than you can't bomb into Laos or the DMZs, I believe. So we're going to go ahead as B-52, place this bad boy up here. We'll do a generic airstrike as well. Um, let's see. Jerk and airstrike down here, down here, over here, and then we'll go ahead and do this uh, AC-47. 
See, we have this helicopter transport. We're not going to mess with him right now. We're not going to worry about that. We don't have enough ground units on the map for me to really worry about it. At least I don't want to. So, all right. So now we have our air aircraft place for the future airstrikes. Um, what we do now is we've completed the air movement phase. Now we go to the OP4 anti-aircraft phase. So now what we do is we have our units here. Now that they're committed, we go ahead and flip over the communist units and we look well, first of all, we can see what they are, because now we're getting an idea, because our units are there. Plus, we look for any anti-aircraft units. Alright, so it looks like there's a couple. So, um, you can see up here, communist infantry, and then there's a, that's anti-aircraft right here. Oop, let me show you guys. Two infantry. Uh, a special forces, and then also a anti-aircraft here. So they're going to be able to shoot at us here and here. Um, so how it works is you go ahead and look. Like I said, we have anti-aircraft here and here. Let's go ahead and start up here, work on this unit right here. He has a firepower of two. So what we do, what I like to do is I like to look on it first. Um, we have our nice little terrain effects chart and also our battle results table. Um, so we'll be using the battle results table here. You can see here, AA unit firing at air or airborne unit. On a five, eliminate one step from a helicopter or airstrike. On a six, eliminate one helicopter or airstrike. Except B-52, notice both of those things, except B-52. So fortunately, we're not gonna have to worry about our B-52. He's too, flies too high, he's not gonna get affected, but they could definitely hit our uh, um, smaller aircraft here. So, or should say, actually small, yeah, well, it's a smaller aircraft, so. All right, so keep that in mind. Five will be eliminated a step. Um, six will be eliminated entirely. He has a firepower of two. Simple. Rolls two dice. Red one's for the communist. All right. A one and a three. Remember, he five eliminated a step. Six would eliminate entirely. So ones and threes. No effect. We're lucky there. All right. And we go down to this area down here. Area 471. He has a three. So he's a slightly more powerful anti-aircraft. Um, he could target either of those. So he's going to go ahead line them up, go ahead with his three firepower. Okay, so we did get a five. So five was eliminate one step from helicopter or airstrike. Um, the airstrike here, go ahead and reduce that down. So he reduces one step, so he's still there, but he does eliminate, or it does reduce it at least. So he went from a three firepower to a two firepower. So didn't hurt us too bad, luckily for us. All right, and that's how, that's the uh, anti-aircraft fire phase. Now I go to the air attack phase. So now it's us getting to conduct our actual airstrikes. So what the game does is it has you line up the units from the enemy units, I should say, from weakest firepower to strongest. And that way, when you, your airstrikes are less effective, because when you do combat, ground combat, it's strongest to weakest. So, so I just went and just did it from left to right, weakest to strongest. So we're going to go ahead and start launching our attacks here. Um, the firepower scenario, it's the same way as we've been doing it, which is for each firepower, you get a D6. Um, yeah, so yes, that means a B-52 gets to roll five dice. So five and then three, so we're going to roll a total of eight dice, and then we'll go ahead and uh, do the damage. So we look at our battle results table, air unit, bombarding ground unit. A five is retreat a unit. Six is eliminate one unit. So we're either going to cause a retreat on a five or eliminate on a six. Let's go ahead and start up here. We get to roll eight dice. I only have three out. So we're going to go ahead and just roll them a few times. So one elimination, one retreat. Nothing. That's six. We have to roll two more. And then nothing there. So it's all right, though. We got an elimination and a retreat. So we'll go ahead and eliminate the weaker unit first. Um, the game has them placed here in this op four units eliminated. I go ahead and I keep them in here because I draw from there. But otherwise that box would, it would go right here in this box. I just keep them in this cup to draw from. And then the other one was a retreat. We get to pick the retreat. We just, I mean, we can't force, like we can't force them to retreat into our forces. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and retreat their communist unit in this open space up here closer to the DMZ. So now we've finished our airstrikes there in that box. We go ahead and we grab our air units, place them in the allied air use box. Um, and then what happens is at the end, when we do the friendly reinforcement phase, next turn, which we won't.
All right, guys, sorry about that little disruption, a little problem with my uh, camera. Um, what I was saying was we go ahead and we are putting the two allied or, uh, airstrike units over here in the allied air use box. And what we do is there's a little chart here that we roll on. So when it comes to our next phase, the friendly reinforcement phase, we go ahead and check each of our aircraft here. For instance, uh, B-52, you, you roll a 1D6 and you roll on a 2 to 6, you get him back. You go ahead and put him back in the allied air available box. Um, and then he'd be available for us to use um, basically immediately. So, all right, um, we can go ahead and we can start finishing up our uh, airstrikes here. So let's go ahead and do this area right here. Firepower three and three, so total of six. We're gonna go ahead and roll twice here. All right, let's see here. Okay, all right, so we got uh, one of those retreats. Oops, no, wrong rogue. Elimination and elimination. So luckily for us, we got two eliminations. Um, so we're able to eliminate both of these communist units here. Once again, they would normally go in this box, but I'm gonna go ahead and put them in my little cup here. And we go ahead and place our air units in the air units used box. So now we go ahead and do right here. Um, so we only have four. So let's roll these three and then one more. And let's roll firepower. So we have one retreat. And nothing. Um, so go ahead and retreat. It'll be the weakest unit. So this elite unit here, he's going to go ahead and retreat. I get to go ahead and pick the retreat, as I said. So I'm going to go ahead and move him over here. So, all right. And then both of these get placed in the allied air use box. Okay, that was the friendly air attack phase. Now we do the friendly ground combat phase. Um, here the ground combat. The only area where we have our units in the same area as theirs is over here uh, on... Long Rue, Route 9 over here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do a ground combat there. You line them up in ground combat, strongest to weakest. Doesn't really matter. All of ours are the same, and they only have one unit. Now, what we do for ground combat, first thing you do is you determine tactical superiority. What that is, simple die roll of 1d6 for each side. And then there's a couple different things you do for modifiers. Uh, I guess one main modifier would be if it's an elite unit, on either side you get a plus one, which the communists have an elite unit. Remember that arrow, that means he's an elite unit. You get, they get a plus one to their roll. And then if there's ties, you look at the terrain. So I guess that's the only one modifier that I can recall. Otherwise, then if it's a tie, you look at the terrain. And then depending on the terrain type, it may be allies win it, defender, or communist. So let's go ahead and roll with a plus one for communist. Okay, so four and three, which they would want anyway. Plus one, so they get a five. So they win tactical superiority. What that means is they get to fire first. So they're going to go ahead and be targeting our strongest unit. So they're all the same, but they're going to target the one right in front of them. They have a two firepower. I'm going to go ahead and roll. We got a six and a two. Um, and then we go ahead and look at our handy battle results table. Um, when is if it's a, it's not an armor firing a ground unit. It's just a, it's an elite, but it's just a elite infantry. All the ground units firing at ground units. Five is retreat. Six is eliminate. One unit or step. He did get a six. So go ahead and we flip that bad boy over um, just to a two. So now he's going to go, our allied unit's going to roll, and he'll now he only has a two firepower because he's been reduced, so only gets to roll two dice. Alright, no effect. Now we don't get to go, they already went, and because we have extra units now, we're going to keep going here. So our next unit there is going to go. Firepower four, so he gets to roll. Alright, so it's six. One more die. of oh, four. So we had one elimination, so he is eliminated. So we go ahead and place him in the eliminated box. Now, if we had gotten a, say we'd gotten a retreat, say this middle unit here had gotten a retreat, or even the first one had gotten a retreat result, that unit would have retreated, say I picked, okay, I'm going to retreat them over here, or I joined forces down here, whatever. Even though there's two other units available to fire, he would suffer the retreat result first, so they would not get an attack on him. That's one way that even if you have, you know, massive firepower advantage, and you say you have all these units, like, well, I'm definitely going to eliminate them. No, if the first one, first unit attacking him only gets retreat result on him, He's just going to retreat. He's not going to be eliminated at all. So it's a way to kind of balance it out a little bit. I like that where you don't do all the attackers at, uh, results at once, all their rolls. You just do one, you know, one at a time. I like that. So, all right. That was the only ground combat we're going to have right now for our friendly anyway. Um, now we go to the op four card phase, the opponent forces card phase. Um, like I said before, we have, so we have a hand of cards. All of our cards are like a hand. With theirs, they have a deck that you draw from and you draw one at a time. So we're going to go ahead and draw their card. 
and we go ahead and we look at the top right to see if there's any modifiers. And we started at turn nine. We took one down because of our card we played, minus one. This one is zero, so no modifiers there. Now, we read the card. Communist probe case on. Replace one limited communist unit and all communist units adjacent to the case on firebase or rock quarry must move into those spaces. All right, which then they're going to attack. Okay. All right, so what we do is we go ahead, start off with, and this will be the next phase, which is the op four reinforcement phase. Replace one eliminated communist unit. So go ahead, we have our little little thing, little cup here, or whatever, or just from there. Draw one, and then we have our chart, communist random location table. Go ahead and roll on that chart. We got a two, which the two is DMZ West. So go ahead, place this unit in DMZ West, and that's a, one of the ways for the communists to get their units back on the map. Um, even after they've been eliminated, they're going to keep coming back on the map. They're not going to just be eliminated and be off the map um, totally. Definitely not. So, all right. Now we go on from that was the reinforcement phase. Now we do the movement phase. Now movement is based on the card for them. Remember, for us, we get to pick for the op four forces. You know, the opposing forces. It's going to be whatever the card says. So if the card doesn't suggest a movement, if this is an event, then they're not going to move at all. The, instead, this one it says it's going to move these two. And they're going to move. So remember, all communist units adjacent to Kason, Firebase, or Rock Quarry must move into those spaces. So they're going to go ahead and move in. We can go ahead and line them up if we want already. Strongest to weakest. Perfect. Because um, there's going to be a combat. Now that they're in the same same space together, they're going to fight it out until they're not. Um, some of them, some of the cards may have a movement that says, okay, all communist movements move, you know, one area closer to Kason. And so it wouldn't just be these guys, it would be all, everybody would move. So it just depends on what card you draw, um, on what movement's going to happen. So, all right, that was the op 4 movement phase. Now we do the op 4 combat phase. Now any communist forces with our forces are going to be a combat, which Rock Quarry and case on. Let's go ahead and do the Rock Quarry first. So just like the same as the combat before uh, we did on our turn, we're going to do tactical superiority first, determine that. They have an elite unit, we do not, so they're going to get a plus one of their roll. So we had a six, four plus one, five. We do win it, so we are going to get to go first. Um, our strongest unit, our infantry here, is going to go ahead. He has a four firepower, so we'll roll these three and one more. A six. And, okay, just the six, which is eliminated, which I don't believe he has a step here. None of the communist forces do. They all just have the star on the back. So he is eliminated, so good for us there. Um, and we go ahead and go over here to the case on firebase combat. Go ahead and determine... Determine uh, tactical superiority. All right, so we win, so we get to go first. So our first, our armor unit there has a three firepower. He's gonna go ahead and do his attack. Okay, nothing here, no hits. Same as before, you know, battle results table. We go ahead and look. This one is armor unit, um, so he has a four as a retreat. He only has a three and two. So just FYI on that, it was an armor unit. Was that one I just did? My next unit will be. Um, the garrison unit, which is all other ground units firing. But now it's their turn, and they have a three firepower, so they're going to go. Go ahead and roll. And they'll be targeting my armor. Two sixes. Yikes, it's eliminate a step, basically. Um, which one is totally eliminated. Oh, I guess the armor only had, doesn't have a So he's actually totally eliminated. So um, go ahead and place him. We have our allied units eliminated box. Go ahead and place it over there. So now all I have is my garrison left. Uh-oh. It's looking a little sketchy here. So now we go ahead and roll for the garrison. He has a two firepower. So he really needs to roll a five or a six. We need to get this guy out of here. Because if he eliminates my garrison, he'll be the last unit standing in case on. And I will lose the game. So we need a five or a six. Okay. Snake eyes. Okay. Um, so now they get to go. And basically we're going to sit here. This is round two. It's going to go back and forth um, between us. So now they get to roll three. Okay, nothing, thankfully. So remember, five is a retreat, six is eliminate. So the best is a four, no result. So now I go, I'm fighting back. We we're trying to hold case on Firebase. The garrison is under a heavy attack. Oh, thank God. Okay, so a five. So it's retreat one unit. Um, so I get to go ahead and retreat him out of here. Whew. Um... Whew, dodge that one. So I'm gonna do it. I get to pick the retreats. I'm gonna go ahead and retreat him there. Um, that was the combat, op four combat phase. It almost got me. Because here's the deal. 
if he had if he had gotten the retreat on me or he'd gotten the elimination result on me, I would have been out of there. He would have been the last remaining unit in case on. And then you go ahead and look at strategic defeat. If at any time in the game there are any comedy units in the case on firebase space and no allied ground units in it, the game ends immediately as a strategic defeat. So we were this close to losing, but we did not. We did not lose. I know what I'll be doing though. I'll be reinforcing case on like crazy next turn. So, all right, that was the F4 combat phase. Now we do the admin phase, which you go ahead and just move the turn marker down one. And you go ahead and flip over any communist unit that is visible. So, all right, and that is it for turn one. And that'll be it for our playthrough here. Uh, I just wanted to do one full turn. So what we'll do is we have our card here. Remember, it says disposition reuse. We can go ahead and put that back in our hand. So with our second turn, we, what we would start with is we'd go ahead and start with the friendly action card phase. Go ahead to pick any card we want. Um, this one was discarded, by the way. So let's see, you have a discard pile. This is for the uh, op four. You'll have a discard, and then some of them will say remove from play because there's also a card that will reshuffle your discard pile back in. So they'll always have cards to draw from. They'll never completely run out of cards. Um, and same thing with you. You should always have cards to be able to play. So that is case on sixty eight. Um, that is a, it's a quick playing, you know, small footprint little game. I like it. As you can see, it can get pretty tense. I almost lost there. If I'd rolled differently, I, I easily would have lost. Uh, this was not, you know, there's no joke there. Um, but I have a lot of fun with it anyway. Just because, like I said, sometimes it's tense like that. And yeah, sometimes you're going to kind of run away with a little bit. You're going to get some lucky die rolls. And next thing you know, you're trouncing the AI here. And you've kicked all, you've eliminated half the units. And you're just like, okay, well, never mind. No risk. But you're also going to have those games like we just had here in the first turn where, for whatever reason, I didn't, I didn't only eliminate one with the airstrike, so we still had one, and he came in and eliminated my armor unit, and he was still fighting with my garrison unit and almost had me, which I would have then lost automatic, um, automatic defeat. So, really good game. I highly recommend it. It's affordable. Um, it's, it's one of these little folio ones, so it's very, you know, it's small footprint, comes just in a little bag. You get everything here, nice and easy, quick to learn, quick to play. The rules, the series rules are four pages. The series rules, four pages. And then the actual, this game's rules, special rules, are one are two pages on one sheet of paper. So, easy to learn, easy to play, and I think it adds a lot of little fun. You get the feel of it, you get to feel it kind of, they're going to pop up all over. And that's one of those things, too, you're going to start seeing Tommy units pop up in different places. Remember, I roll on that chart to see where they pop up. I may have units there already. Um, they may move special places. You never know what's going to happen, especially because you never know what card you're going to draw. The only thing you can really control is what cards you play, and that's only half of it. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, please comment below. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Um, thumb up the video. And otherwise, I will see you guys next time. Later.